let's look at leveraged ways to trade China. First off, read this disclaimer carefully, like, sub, share, and comment. We will look at the FXI, which is you know, the China benchmark ETF. We will also look a bit at the S&P 500 for comparison. We will look at the Jin, which is good if you are very bullish, and the Yang if you are feeling bearish. Let's first look a bit at the performance of the lever leveraged uh, products. So here we have the bullish one, 147% from the lows. That's a decent move. Uh, the bears have seen a little bit of love here, 15% uh, from the lows, but uh, certainly the market has been favoring the bulls uh, so far. Let's start by looking at the seasonality of the FXI, which is you now the benchmark um, China ETF. We have some very interesting seasonality. You have this strength, strength, and strength. I mean, this very peculiar seasonality. You can see that May, August, and December are they are factually weak based on all of this history. So uh, the current month is one of the strongest, but December, which is around the corner, is one of the weaker. Let's look at it against the S&P 500. Um, yeah, you can see that, you know, it's it, it, November, December, basically 50-50. So nothing special there. Okay, let's look at the charts to, uh, you know, get some kind of lean. Should we be bullish or bearish? So this is a lot of history for the FXI. We go way back here to 2006. Major bull market, of course. Then we have the financial crisis. The interesting thing about China is that it has been shuffling sideways, consolidating. And the saying go goes is that the longer you go sideways, the bigger the eventual breakout. If a coming breakout happens as a realization that China is uh, the new economic superpower of the world, you know, um, of course, it is not the case that America is just going to just disappear. What What is going to happen is that when China becomes more powerful, we will have a multipolar world, but we could certainly see a situation where major um, U.S. companies will list their stocks on the Chinese stock exchanges. That would be a game changer and uh, would be very disruptive. It would be bullish for China. So looking at the long term, looking decades into the future, I am bullish on the Chinese uh, stock markets. But there is a big caveat. Um, I don't think that America will just... Uh, well, I don't think th think that the American intelligence and military industrial complex, I don't think they will just gracefully step aside and let China take over the show. Uh, I think there is a very high risk of conflict. So that's something to be... That's, that's no factor X. Anyway... Um, one of the things that jumps at me at the chart here, from the chart, is that you have this very clear cyclicality. So let's actually investigate how consistent these time cycles are. Are they, are they reliable or not? Uh, you see that here you have these very reliable time cycles, but this, when you have one of those huge moves up or down, that can disrupt the cycles. So do we have any new cycles? Now, we don't have any very clear cyclicality, but we do have cyclicality in the sense that it does move, tends to move up and down in these waves. So that is the psychology of the market. That is something that means that it can be annoying to be long term long the Chinese market. It can also be annoying to just be short. Hence, this is very good for swing traders. And that is especially beneficial when it comes to these leveraged products. So what do I think will, will happen next? Okay. It is interesting that we have had this long rising phase. The history is that there usually is a decline following it. That's been happening for, which, you know, it's a hint that maybe there is a bit of a decline on the horizon. We are seeing some exhaustion here in the latest candlesticks. The bulls just evaporated. 
Let's look at um, the daily data points. Yeah, and you can see, you know, in a lot more detail this uh, how it moves in this up and down, up and down. Hence, uh, the long-term hist history very strongly suggests that we should expect a bit of a pullback unless, and that's a big but, unless we could be witnessing the great breakout soon that this long-term consolidation will then result in, the, in this big, big breakout to the upside. Of course, that is going to be very, very aggressively bullish. But even if something like that is on the horizon, it would be prudent for the bulls to maybe pull back a bit, move up, pull back a bit, and then have enough energy to not simply break out above these key resistance levels, but also to really power, 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 power through um, in such a big way, big way that it is actually sustainable. Okay, so let's now do some statistical studies. So we do it like this. We take the FXI here in uh, the background, like that, and then we have the yin. And this is the one. If you are bullish, long term there is actually an 89% positive correlation. That is very good, very good actually. If you look at the daily data points, we have a 99% positive correlation. So st statistically, the yin does track FXI pretty well. Let's look at the yang. That is the one if you are feeling bearish. In this instance, we have a minus 26% negative correlation long term, which means that there's de there definitively is divergence between the FXI and uh, the yang long term. Looking at the short term, there's a minus 96% correlation. So it, shorter term, the Yang does track the FXI reasonably well. Okay. So let's compare the FXI a bit with the S&P 500. One of the things I looked at is the valuation. And so the PE for the Chinese market is around 11. Uh, it is 24 for the S&P 500, which now rep represents America, which means that the Chinese stock market is more than half. You know, it's 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 at a 54% discount. Yeah, uh, you could say you could say so. It's basically on sale sale. So that's interesting. See how you can see the yin. Look here at expense ratio. The expense ratio is on the higher end, but that is what we expect with these leveraged uh, products. Uh, interest interestingly, we do see that uh, the expense ratio is actually lower for the bearish one than the bullish one. I'm not entirely sure what why that is the case, but we did see that the bearish one it did not do uh, a it did not do a good job tracking the FXI long term, while the yin was certainly better. So to sum up my take here on the Chinese stock market, long term I, I do think that we could see a significant breakout after this very 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 long uh, consolidation. Uh, but the big factor X is that uh, the military industrial complex in the United States is not simply going to uh, gracefully step aside. Uh, so I do think that there's a high risk of conflict if China um, be uh, becomes uh, the next superpower and is too um, uh, cocky about it. As far as uh, if the m the coming horizon, there were some reason to su to expect expect a bit of a pullback, maybe, which would be beneficial for the Yang. And that is basically because, as we saw with the FXI here, the FXI it does move in these cycles uh, for a very long time. It's been up and down, up and down. Fantastic for swing trading. Uh, given that we have had a protracted rising cycle, well, well rising phase of a cycle, uh, then um, unless this rising phase is like uh, these two, which are the anomalies, well, except for this one after the financial crisis, um, Whatever you do, you do, of course, uh, be careful.